I'm back! Hello, hello! Welcome to my YouTube channel Marley Design and my name is Marlies. On the left side on my table you can see what I have created in my last video. That video was all about how to decorate ephemera in bulk. I had great reactions, lovely comments. For what I would like to say, thank you for your enthusiasm. And to jump right in, there was a comment. I do not remember if it was on my YouTube channel or maybe on my Instagram account, but it was about the Distress Oxide Spray Chipped Sapphire and applying that color with my mini blending tool. So what happened in the video? I did some texture paste on top of my larger pieces of ephemera. And when the texture paste was dry, I colored it with the Distress Spray Brush Corduroy and on top the Distress Oxide Spray Chipped Sapphire. For me, combining two colors is also right away my color scheme for the rest of the project. So when I came up to the point I wanted to distress all the edges of my papers, I realized I do not have the Chipped Sapphire Distress Ink Pad. But I really, really wanted that color onto the edges of the papers. I had some leftover ink from this bottle on my craft sheet, took out my mini blending tool, picked up the color, and that is how I could get this color onto the edges of my paper. I got some reactions about that. How is the sponge holding up? When the color is dried, um, yeah, is this like really hard or is the sponge still soft, the foam? Does the foam dry or does it stay wet because of the wet ink? Of course I have to find out myself too, because that reaction came shortly after I applied the ink to the papers, so I had no idea on how this would react. But now we are a couple of days later and we can check. So yeah, my sponge is still soft. And in front of me is a leftover piece of paper and I would like to see how much of the ink will go onto the paper and if the foam is still working. Well, it is so, so light that even my camera does not pick up very well. No, it is almost invisible. Then my next question would be, if this ink is dry right now on the foam, can I still use this foam in the way a blending tool is supposed to work? So let me try to put on some Distress Ink Picked Raspberry with this blending tool. Even though I pressed hard at the beginning, the blending tool is still transferring the ink to my papers as it should do. I think that the conclusion can be that the Distress Oxide Spray did not damage my foam and the mini blending tool. Now that I have answered that question, I can go to the, well, just intro of this video. A new video for you guys. This is what we already created. And this was the other part of my bulk create ephemera video. But like I explained before, last week my children were on a holiday, so I had them at home and I also had to work. Um, that was also the reason I could not spend a whole lot of time on videotaping and editing. And that is also the reason why I decided to yeah, do this in two parts. Today we're going to focus on these papers. And the most important thing is that it will match the ephemera pieces that we already have. What I will do first is to create two different kind of papers with the same colors that I used in my earlier uh, decorating video on the ephemera. So I got out the Distress Spray Stain Brush Corduroy and the Distress Oxide Spray Chipped Sapphire. Now I will fill up those two pages, loose pages of mixed media paper. It is a lightweight, around 190 grams, so it is not too heavy. Maybe a piece with Brush Corduroy, a piece with the Chipped Sapphire, and a piece where I combine the colors together. Here are my two results, but yeah, for me it's not done yet. So I will go back in and I will do some uh, yeah, ink stains, uh, dipping the paper into the ink and some splattering to give the papers a little bit more interest.
besides dipping my papers into those ink drops and also the splattering that I did, I also tried to remove some of the ink with some water splatters and uh, a kitchen towel. And why am I holding this in my other hand? Well, because I really want to make sure that it is all matching together. And it is. The papers with the Distress ink is done and I have put it to the side uh, so I can use it uh, later and I know it is there if I want to combine the colors into my little projects. But for now I will concentrate on these elements because I want to make the background a little bit more interesting. Here I have two of the tags that I have created in my last video and we have used a stencil with roses and a stencil with ornaments. On these papers I would like to try a different kind of technique, but I do want to create something that will match the all over look that we already have. And I have found this stamp set from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. Distress Damask CMS 190 and I would like to use this stamp set with the Distress Embossing Ink and the Chip Sapphire Embossing Glaze. One thing that I would like to point out before starting with the stamping, that I'm not going to stamp one whole stamp on top of one piece of paper. I will stamp partially. The embossing glaze is done, but I would also like to add my second color, the Distress Spray Stain Brush Corduroy. I will spray some of the ink on top of my craft sheet, I will pick it up with a small brush and I will divide the color on top and around the stamped images. After applying the brushed corduroy, I have put all my papers to the side to air dry. After they were dry, I have put them into a large stack of heavy books and I left them in between the books overnight so they can flatten out. Now on to the fun part, decorating and embellishing. From the paper that we created in the beginning of our video, I have cut out these two butterflies. This is a thin lit set from Tim Holtz and Sizzix. And the number is 661802. The back of both butterflies I have cut out of the brushed corduroy color. And the top layer, the more fragile, the delicate part, I have cut out out of the chipped sapphire color. I have placed both butterflies on the biggest pieces of ephemera that I have. Out of the inky backgrounds I have also cut out flowers. I have cut them out of these two sets of thinlets. This set number is 664164 and this set number is 666565. And I haven't only cut them out of the colored paper, I also did a white set. I have made the choice to leave these labels as is because I really like the ornament that we have stamped on top and I want it to be visible. For the rest of the items, for example these tall labels, uh, this card and of course the coin envelope, I found some pieces of ephemera and especially small labels from the Tim Holtz ephemera pack snippets labels. Now let's move forward and decorate. 
what I will do for the tag and the two labels. I will ink up the edges with my archival ink ground espresso. After that I will also do some splattering with the colors that we already used because this background and this background and also the white flowers are a little bit too white to my liking. So I want a bit of color in there. And the last step will be to glue everything down. Oh, and just maybe a little bit of stamping with my ledger script in the background of the white cards. So that was the whole process of decorating and embellishing, a little bit of stamping. And in the end I did not videotape that, but it is clear when you see it I have put some fabric through the holes of the labels. I have also put my other papers from my last video around the papers that we just created to show you that yeah, everything is going well together, it is matching. And the whole point of starting this little video series about bulk create ephemera and decorate your ephemera in bulk is that you have like a very big set of beautiful ephemera pieces in a very short amount of time. Now that this whole set is complete, that also means my video is coming to an end. I had a lot of fun creating all these pieces of ephemera and I hope you enjoyed it too. All the supplies that I have used, I will put them into my description box below so you can check it out. And if you want to check me and my work out, I will also put my links in the description box for my social accounts and my coffee shop. And for a good algorithm on my videos, I would like to ask you like this video, comment down below or subscribe. Do not forget to hit the notification button so you will get notified when I upload a new video. That's all for today. Bye!